Okay, it says we're recording. Just trying to see who we got here. So, we, oh, good. We've because we only had seven people when I got here. Today. This is great. We got a lot more people here. So, welcome everybody. Um, and Texas is here twice. He's he wants to get double the credit. I think right. <laughs> All right. So um, let me start sharing my screen. And today, I kind of introduced this last time because it was hard to not talk about it. But um, oops, today we're going to talk about. Oh, I can close that. Graph of the sine and the cosine functions. Okay. Now maybe I should make this a little bit bigger. Go away. How do I get rid of my navigation bar? I can't press anything. Go away. Um, ah, let me go away that time. Okay, so All right, so we're going to talk about the graph of the sine and the cosine function. Okay, so if we were to take the unit circle, maybe I should have left that thing there. Um, but uh, anyway, so if I use the unit circle, the um, if x is 0, the sine of 0 is 0. If x is pi 6, the sine of pi 6 is 1 half. If x is three is pi thirds, the sine of pi thirds is square root of three over two. If x is pi halves, the sine of pi halves is one, etc. So we can do that for everything, and we could come up with a nice table like this. Okay. Um, now you'll notice here. Um, I. I would, uh, I, almost, I almost don't even want to say that. I know that's in the book, but it's not helpful. The amplitude of, of so if A represents a number, the amplitude of Y, A equals, Y equals A times the sine of X is the absolute value of A. As you look here uh, at the Y values here, the highest value we've got is one, the lowest value we've got is negative one. I guess maybe I should put that back in here. Um, so your amplitude is one half of your maximum minus your minimum. Um, and so basically the easiest thing to do is if you have a number in front of the sine function, the amplitude or the, the amount it goes up and down is whatever that, le whatever that number is. Okay. So the idea is if we were to plot the points, uh, these points here that I've got in this table on a, a graph, this is going to be the sine function, okay? So this is what we call a sine wave, okay? So the idea here is the amplitude is the amount you're gonna go either higher or lower than the x-axis here. And so we can plot all of these points. So the easiest thing to do um, is to plot one period. Now we talked last time, I'm gonna come back to this graph in just a minute, but I do want you to kind of memorize this. The easiest thing when you're when you're plotting a sine wave, all all sine waves are going to follow this this pattern here, up and down. So you're going to start at zero, you're going to go up to one, and one is going to remember the sine of pi halves is one, okay? So that's your amplitude. The sine of three pi halves is going to be negative one, so that's also going to be your amplitude in the negative direction. Um, we talked last time in class, and we'll review it here in just a minute. Um, the period of your sine wave is going to be 2 pi, which means half of your period is going to be pi. So when you guys are graphing this sine wave, I'm going to ask you to graph this freehand. Basically, what I'm going to the, the I'm going to be looking for probably four major points, okay? Four or five things, okay? So I want to make sure you've got your amplitude right. Your amplitude is going to be between negative one and positive one. Um, the four points I would like to see are 0, 2 pi, which is one period, pi, which is half of your period, and then you're going to have your maximum is going to be at pi halves, and your minimum is going to be at 3 pi halves. 
Okay, so those probably one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five X points that I want you to see, and I want to go up and down one unit. Okay. Um, all right, so last time we talked a little bit in class about periodic, periodic functions and periods. This is a review of 2.4 um, that we talked about last time. Remember, every day repeats every 24 hours. If f of t represents the present time of the day, then in 24 hours later, it can be expressed as f of t plus 24, which is the same as f of t. Um, so in 24 hours, it's currently 8.29 a.m. In 24 hours, it will be 8.29 a.m. again. So you can just get this, the same function that we started with. This is said to be a periodic function. It repeats over and over and over. So a periodic function exists such that there's a constant p such that if f, f of t plus p equals f of t for all the t in the domain, the smallest p is called the period of f, okay? So in every unit circle, it's periodic every 360 degrees or two pi. Any point uh, p of x, y um, on the ordered pair of cosine sine t um, is going to be the cosine of t plus 2 pi and the sine of t plus 2 pi. This is the same for the cosecant and the secant as well. Uh, we're not going to talk about the tangent today. We'll save that for tomorrow, I believe. But just so you know, when we talk about the tangent, it's periodic at pi rather than 2 pi, and that's the same for the cotangent as well. Okay, so um, so just kind of as a review, we talked about this last time. Your your tangent and your cotangent is going to repeat every pi units. Your sine and your cosine and your yeah the sine and the cosine are going to repeat every two pi two pi and then we could have an integer k as well. Okay, so therefore. <clears throat> On a unit circle, the coordinates are 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. And with similar logic, we can find the coordinates for pi halves. Um, so one cycle equals one period. The sine of x has a period of 2 pi. The sine of 2x, okay, now this is, this is going to be important, okay? So... Remember, if I put a 2 out in front, that's going to refer to the amplitude. If I put a 2 next to the x, okay, that's going to reduce my period. Okay, So your period is basically going to be 2 pi, because remember, over b. Okay, So if I have y equals the sine of 2x, this 2 is going to represent the letter b. Okay, So I'll put that 2 in here. So if I have... 2 pi divided by 2, that's going to be have a period of pi, okay? This is going to be a very, very important formula for you to remember um, what, as, as we start graphing functions, okay? Now, if I take the sine of x over 2, what that's going to do is that's going to stretch it out. So as we look back here, okay, um, remember, a regular sine function, um, well, actually, maybe I could do that. I wonder if I can, I don't have any drawing tools. Well, maybe I do. Okay. Now, it says here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can draw a circle with my finger here. If I were to graph y equals minus 2 sine of x on top of this same graph, Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up two units down and two units up. I'm going to try very hard to draw this on this on this thing with my finger. Okay, so with, if I graph y equals minus two sine of x, rather than going above, I'm going to go below, and I'm going to go down two units. My period is going to stay the same, and then I'm going to go up two units. Okay. So this two in this case, okay, I'm done drawing, okay. Two in this case is going to 
double my amplitude so it's going to be a lot steeper here and it doesn't look like it here but this is where my maximum should be used at pi halves or my minimum in this case because the, the negative flipped it upside down and i probably drew that a little bit too high at three pi halves okay now if i were to draw i guess i got a yellow line here okay if I were to draw y equals three sine of x, that's going to go even higher, steeper. We're going to go to negative three. Well, that one looked a lot better. Okay. So, um, so do you do you understand what amplitude does to me here? I do. Okay. All right. Now. Let's do a few other. Hopefully, this doesn't save. I don't want to. Uh. All right. So, we haven't. So, let's talk a little. We're going to go back to period here. Okay. Um, so, your period is going to be the, the number in front of the X. Oh, I forgot my drawing was still on. I should turn that off, but that's okay. Your period. You, so, your period of Y. Let me back up again. Amplitude, this is what you want to remember here. Amplitude is the number in front of your sign. Your period is going to be the number in front of your x. Okay? It's always 2 pi over b. So period is 2 pi over b. Okay? Now, we haven't talked about the cosine function. The cosine function and the sine function are... The cosine function, you can think of it just like the sine function shifted at 90 degrees, okay? So rather than starting at zero, the cosine function is going to start at one. It's also going to have a period of two pi, okay? Um, the amplitude, so basically what I'm graphing here is y equals the cosine of x, okay? So it's also going to have a period of two pi, halfway through at pi, pi halves is half there, and then um, three pi halves, okay? So if you're graphing the cosine function, the four points that I wanna see are gonna be zero, pi halves, pi, three pi halves, and two pi, okay? The amplitude's gonna start at one, it's gonna go to negative one at pi, and then it's going to go back up to positive one, and then it will just keep repeating. Okay. Um, so those are kind of the five things I will be looking for um, on the cosine function. Okay. All right. So um, before we give away the answer, even though you can kind of see it here, I'm going to try to draw. Maybe I should open up paint. I think this is going to be easier. Oh, that didn't help graph. <laughs> um, pi x. Okay. Well, maybe I'll just retype that. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to erase this. And since I can't write pi, um, pi times x. Okay, so you all are experts now because I've showed you one example here. <laughs> um, so if I ask you to graph y equals the sine of pi x, okay? I want you to tell me, and if I ask you to graph one, uh, one period or one cycle of the sine of x. Um, let's see here. Let's start with, how about Tayton? Tayton, can you tell me how to graph y equals the sine of pi x? Does having pi x instead of just x um, decrease your period? 
Yeah. So let's. Yeah. yeah so that's good. I'm glad you're going there. Let's. T so let's talk about your amplitude and your period right off the bat. Okay. Um, so what would? First of all, let's do amplitude, and then we'll go to period. That would equal so what one. would the amplitude be in this? One. One unit. And your period would be? I don't know, because our period equals 2 pi when it's just the sine of x. Right. If it's the sine of pi x, then it would be smaller. Smaller. Would it be okay. Two pi. So, so remember. Pi? So remember our function. Our 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 formula for the period is two pi divided by b. Right. Oh. What is b in this case? Pi. So our period pi. would be. It's going to be two pi divided by pi, which equals two. Two. Okay which makes it kind of nice. Cool. So if I'm drawing my tick marks here, so if this represents one and minus one, and let's say that this represents two, so you're gonna need to know your period before you can start drawing this, right? Okay. So if this represents two, that's gonna be one period, right? So, so halfway through, this is going to be about one here, right? Okay. So in this case, uh, I'll use my pencil. So how would I draw my sine wave? Can you you'd finger draw the, since you're, yeah. Yeah, you'd start at the origin uh -huh. and go um, up at a diagonal and then cross through the x-axis at one and go down and back up to two. Okay. So now that we've got this, the next question, so we've got the amplitude, so there's, okay, so we've got the amplitude is, is one or plus or minus one. Your period in this case is two. Where is your maximum? At 0.5. At point five, and your minimum at one point five. Point five. So if we, so as we're drawing this on here, home. Uh, so this point here, I would like you to mark, and I would like you to mark this point as well. And so this is zero point five, and this is one point five. Okay. So that's basically how I would, so on the, on the quiz, I don't know that I can do this on the quiz. Uh, the quiz is going to be interesting. I'm on, cause I don't, I want to make me make it multiple choice, but on the test, I can guarantee you when we're doing the graphs, they will not be multiple choice. I will just have you draw it on your paper and then turn in your paper and I will look at your drawing. So I probably should label my Y axis as well. This is one and this is Minus one. Okay. So basically, this is what I would like to see on a, on a sine wave. Does that make sense? Okay. Well done, Tayton. Who's studying with Tayton? He's got his graphs down. Are you in the study group, Tayton? Kinda. Yeah. I didn't jump on any of the calls, but we're on the tech. Group. Okay. Now, as so as I've got this here. Um, of course, it's going to repeat over and over and over. We just graphed from zero to two here. That's what we graphed. But of course, since it's a periodic function, it's going to just repeat over and over and over. Okay. Um, all right. So let's do another one here. Um, I wonder if this is going to copy. We're going to find out how well this copies. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Oh, well, that actually worked out pretty well. Okay. It's kind of small, I'm sure. So now um, I want you to graph y equals minus one half the sine of x over three. So I'm going to draw another graph here. And 
Let's have somebody here. That was Titan. How about Nicole? Nicole's like, no, don't pick on me. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've seen Tate do it. So, yes. uh, and as as we're doing this, in fact, this is probably a good list uh, because before you even start drawing this, let's talk about the amplitude. Let's talk about the period. Let's talk about the maximum and let's talk about the minimum. Okay. Okay. Where those occur. So the amplitude will be negative one half or would it just be half? Yeah, you, we always say the absolute value, so you can ignore the negative. So we'll say one half, okay? Okay. And, and the period, three. that'll be, this is this is probably the most critical value here. And is that, you say 2 pi divided by B, so it'd be 2 pi, div pi well. Divided by. It would be X over 3, or just 3. So two, so you can ignore the x, okay. but two pi divided by one over three. One over three. Okay. Right now, what does that equal? Uh, am I okay to use a calculator? <laughs> no. Um. Um. Pencil and paper is okay though. Three. Be like two point something, two point. No. No? Okay, then. Remember, what do you do when you have a fraction divided by a fraction? What do you do? Oh, you multiply. Multiply. You so through. this is going to be two pi times three, which is six pi. Six pi. Okay. Six pi. That's what we're looking for our period. Okay. Okay, okay so we'll ignore the maximum minimum for now. But for now, uh, I need to draw my thing with you here. So we know that the period is now 6 pi, right? Mm -hmm. So this one's going to be a lot, my scale's not going to be the same, but it's going to be a lot wider than the previous one that we just drew, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so if we're drawing this again, uh, what's half of 6 pi? 3 pi. Okay, so half of 6 pi is 3 pi. So that'll be the next point that we want to see on the graph. And what's half of 3 pi? 1.5 pi, right? 1.5 pi, or the better thing that you would, you could put 1.5, but I'd rather you said 3 pi divided by 2. 2, okay. 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 Which is 1.5 pi. So now the next question is, okay, what is this a value here? Um, would that be four pi? Because this is one and a half pi, right? So you could say four point five pi. Okay. Except for we would probably not like to use decimals on that. Um, so three, three pi plus three pi over two which would be six pi over two. So um, so this would be nine pi halves, right? Yeah. Nine, nine pi halves, okay? So that's what I would like to see. Okay, so now tell me how to draw my sine wave. So you start at the origin. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to go up to the amplitude up. of. Oh, down because it's negative. Thank negative, you. Correct. So oh, I forgot we forgot to put our amplitude on here. So we're going to put our amplitude. So what value should these be? Uh, one half. So this is one half on the top. And negative one half on the bottom. OK. OK, so I'd like to see those as well. Okay. okay, and we're starting at the origin, we're going. You're going to go down to one half 
at the three pi over two and then to zero at three pi and then up to one half and then back to zero at six pi. Okay. So as we finish our table here, our maximum is where? Um, the maximum is nine pi over two. Nine pi over two. And our minimum is at? Three pi over two. Three pi over two. Okay. Piece of cake, huh? Sure. <laughs> you gonna ace my test? Definitely gonna try. All right. And and my quiz tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> All right. That was I like the confidence. That was good. Okay, so there we go. So yes, just like we said, period is six pi, maximum nine pi halves, minimum three pi halves, intercepts at zero, three pi, and six pi. These concepts apply to the cosine function, but it's going to be shifted 90 degrees. Okay. So let's do this one here. Oh, I'm running out of room. Maybe I can paste it here. Well, that worked out pretty good. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, maybe I can... Move this over here. All right, so if I move this around here. Hope I didn't chop off my minus sign, it's still there. Okay. I should have thought about my spacing before I did this, but that's all right. All right, so now here we go. So now this means, Nicole, that you're the expert now. People are going to come to you with questions, right? All right. Okay, so we want to graph this. Y equals negative two cosine pi fourths X. Okay. So let's pick on Mason. All righty. Okay. So Mason, what should we do? We're still going to look at Nicole because you must not be on camera. Yeah, my camera button's grayed out, so I can't figure. Oh, that's cool. I was trying to figure out why it's not working, but hopefully I'll figure it, it out. Does it work normally? Yeah, it should. It has been oh. the past couple, the past week. So. Sometimes, um, mine there's like a little switch on mine. Anyway, you can turn it on and off. But anyway, okay. All cool. right. So what are the four things I should know before I start graphing? Um, we need to know the amplitude and the period. Amplitude and the period, and then we'll figure out the maximum and the minimum later, right? Yep. Okay, what's your amplitude? Uh, that would be two. Two, okay. And your period? Uh, that would be eight pi. Say it again. Uh, eight pi. Eight pi. It's two pi divided by one fourth. One fourth, which equals eight pi. Oops. I'll try to keep that all in one line. Okay. All right. So as we do this, okay, so we're going to go up one, two. And by the way, if you guys want to use graph paper on your tests, I will not complain at all. Uh, <laughs> okay. And so we're going to go out to eight pi here. And then half of 8 pi is? Uh, 4 pi. 4 pi. Half of 4 pi is? 2 pi. 2 pi. That was a nice easy one. Unlike poor Nicole, she had to figure that out. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, two pi. And then this value in the other middle is going to be what? Uh, six pi. Six pi. Six pi. Okay. So now what? So then you would start on your negative two point on the y axis. Okay. And then you, I, I think you would want to go, um, you go, you want to go out, your, your minimum would be uh, at the 2 pi, and you would start going back towards the 4 pi. Does that make sense? So your minimum is going to be on the y-axis. Right. I, oh, I just mean like you're going to keep the... Is that what you were trying to tell me it looked like? Yeah, I had it flipped the other way, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad. Okay, that, yeah. No, that makes sense. Why, so, yeah, you start. did you start high instead of low? Right. But, yeah, we've got a negative. So we have a negative, right. Okay. Cool. All right, so now that we've got our graph drawn, tell me where the maximum and the minimum is. Uh, the maximum is at 4 pi. 4 pi. And the and minimum? The minimum would be at 8 pi. 8 pi, and where else? Um, 2 pi. 0. Or 0 pi, yeah. Yeah, just plain old 0. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. You guys seem like you're doing really well on this. Okay. I just have one, one quick question, sorry. Okay. Um, it might be kind of stupid, but... For the period on this one, so if it's 2 pi, and then... Oh, you the, know, we screwed up, didn't we? So it would wouldn't we it be 8? We screwed up the period. That's okay. What should the period be? Because I got 8, because it's 8 pi it's over It's just plain pi. old 8, not 8 pi. Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah, Mason, it was Mason that did yeah, that. no. Oh, right, because that would have, if it was X the pies four, cancel. Right, okay. No, that we shouldn't have had a sense. 1 there. We should have had a pie there. Gotcha. That should have been a pie over 4. Yeah. So the nice thing about this is all we need to do is erase all the pies. Thank you, Graham, for paying attention there. Okay, so our maximum is not at 4 pi, it's at just plain old 4. And our minimum is at 8 and 0. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so don't forget the pi there. Okay, which makes you sound like, hey, don't forget the pi. Okay. Um, how about this one? I said we better stop now because we're going to run out of places to put our stuff, right? Oh, that was not supposed to go there, but maybe I'll get lucky. Okay, perfect. I got lucky. Okay. 2 pi. So, uh, where's the pits? Doesn't like the number pi. 2 pi times x. I, and then the X is over here. Okay, so the, we're going to graph 2 pi thirds X, the cosine. All right, so now you guys are getting really good at this, I can tell. I don't want and lower than 90 on my test, okay? Is that okay with everybody? Don't let yep. me down. <laughs> All right. Um, Josue. No, we picked on Josue. Let's go with Jackson. Or Kobe. Did Kobe just come back? So for, I don't, it seems like Kobe's microphone doesn't work or something. Are you here, Kobe? Yes, I'm here. All right. All right. My computer got disconnected. 
Oh, is that what happened? All right, Colby, can you help me graph this? I, especially if you've been disconnected, you might not be up to speed, but we're going to find out. Okay, so would the amplitude just be one in this case? Is that a question? No. Oh, good. I'm glad. It sounded like a question. <laughs> okay. And the period? This is a good hard one. What do you think? Um, let's see. Is it just three pi? How did you figure that out? Uh, I did. 2 pi times 3 pi over 2. Oh, you, oh, well, so be careful. Um, you said times, but let's, let's do it divide first. Okay. I think that, okay. So 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 3, right? Yeah. Okay. So the 2 pi's will cancel, and the 3 is going to go to the numerator, and I'm going to be left with what? So they cancel. The two pies are going to cancel each other. So you just left with three. Just left with point oh three. Perfect. Okay. So your period in this case is just going to be three. So let me draw a three on here. Okay. So if this is three, what's half of three? One point five. 1.5, which half of 1.5? Uh, 0.75. 0.75 or points or three fourths. And then what's this other point over here in the middle? Let's see. 2.25. Two point two five, right? Perfect. Okay, so we've got our basic thing here. Our amplitude is one. So we probably should draw our amplitude on here. If that's one. Obviously these the X and the Y are not on the same scale. Well that's okay. So this is positive one and negative one. Okay. And how do I draw this? So it's cosine, so it doesn't start at the origin. And Correct. it goes down from 1. So we're starting at positive 1 and we're going down? Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible looking thing, but that's all right. That's what happens when you draw with your finger. Okay? You know, that's terrible. we got to do that one again. Mm -hmm. That's better. Okay. That, pretend that goes through one. It's supposed to go through one. <laughs> okay. So, um, where's your maximum and your minimum? Uh, the maximum is at one and three. It's not at one. Three was correct, though. 
Is that it? It's a zero. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, not not one, but zero. Okay. And your minimum is one point five. One point five. Bang. God, we're just flying through all this stuff. Um. Oh, intercepts. I forgot about that. Intercepts are at three fourths, nine fourths. Which, yeah, three fourths, nine four, two point two five. I'm fine with that. Okay. Is that the last one I had today? You guys are making me want to do the tangent because I think we probably have enough time on that. Do you want to do another section? I sorry. I have one quick question again. Okay. Um, so for this last one that we just did, can you just go over how the period equals three? I just am a little confused about that. On the uh, on the cosine okay. two thirds over three or two pi over three. So the period okay. So remember the period is always two pi over b. In this case, your b is two pi thirds, right? Okay. So I've got two pi divided by two pi thirds. So those two pi's will cancel, and then this this three goes in the numerator essentially. Right. So so b is just whatever's before the variable. Yeah. Yeah. Right? This whole thing here is b. Okay. Perfect. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I have a question. When you say intercept, that's just when it hits the origin right at zero. The graph. Well. I guess we should be a little bit more clear in my notes here. So you, so looking at here at this graph, you've got you got a, a, a y intercept at zero one, you've got mm -hmm. an x intercept at three fourths zero and at nine fourths zero. Okay. In the book, they use they we use decimals here, and I don't mind that. Or looking here, two point two five comma zero point seven five zero, and that's supposed to go through one, so zero one. Okay. And do you want us to include that with the? Yeah, let's let's do that. In fact, we we'll, we will go back. So the intercepts on this one are, if we leave them as ordered pair form, zero, one, um, point seven five. I'm sorry, let me put that in parentheses. Point seven five zero, <coughs> and two point two five, comma zero. Yeah. Okay, so we probably let's go back and find the intercepts here since we didn't mention them earlier. How about let's see here, uh, Jackson? Jackson, can you give me the intercepts on this graph here? Yeah, the y-intercept is at uh, that's negative two zero. Okay, and then we have one at. Two zero and six zero. Okay. On, on that first intercept on the other one, it was the intercept was at zero negative two, not negative two zero. Oh yes, you're correct. We said those backwards, didn't we? Good job there, Texas. Zero negative two. Okay. Yes, thank you. Keep us on the straight and narrow here. Okay, how about the intercepts on this graph here? Um, whose turn is it now? Uh, it must be Graham's been good. Chris, it's Chris's turn. Give me the intercepts here on this first graph. The first one equals sign. Is that what you're asking? Oh, there it is. Sorry, it I just showed you. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So zero zero. <clears throat> then it's one zero. Oh, then it's two zero. Well done. And the intercepts here. 
Uh, whose turn is it now? It is uh, Cassie. Cassie has really bad inner inner net. We know she's trying to answer, but we cannot tell what you're saying. Cassie, we're going to skip you. Let's go to Cameron Daly. Hopefully your internet's better. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, intercepts would be 0, 0, 3 pi 0. And then six pi zero. That was good. We hope that's what Cassie said. We couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's what she said. <laughs> I actually have no idea. It was it was hard to hear. All right. So um I almost hate to let you guys get out early, but I guess we're 15 minutes early. The thing is, if we go faster, then we can slow down on the hard stuff. It seems like you guys have this down pretty well. What do you want to do? Do you want to cover another section or do you not want to? Here, we'll do the chat thing here. Um, another or stop. So you can give me a thumbs up on what you want to do. How many people do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve people here. And we've had nine, ten people vote. That's pretty close. People want to stop. Um, Okay, well, hopefully this stays as easy as it has been and we don't have to be like rushing through the hard stuff. Okay, um, I guess we'll be a, a benevolent dictator and stop. Um, <laughs> so just a quick reminder. Um, so we're going to cover 2.6 tomorrow, which is going to be on tangents. And then um, we're going to review on Wednesday. I'm going to see if I can come up with a good, really super hard review. And then the test will be so easy on Thursday. So um, reminder, I haven't looked today, but it seems like there are still people who have not taken the proctorio quiz. If you have not taken that, please, please, please get that done don't want to have any problems on Thursday. It's a one question quiz, easy peasy. Just can you see this question? Um, and then we'll have Proctorio. So um, remember, be careful with your calculators. I'm trying to decide if I should make you guys use the calculator on. It might be easier. I might, you know what? I might give you a calculator that'll be on screen um, and then everybody what's i might do that then you guys can use the the so then so 
no personal calculators you can use the calculator on screen i think i'm going to do that and i don't have to worry about people using the wrong calculators um graphs you'll have to do on your own on paper if you want to use graph paper that's awesome um tests will be on thursday from 8 to 9 30 I'll give you the whole hour and a half um, you'll need to upload your test by 9 45 and uh, i would say that the tests are going to be like or the test will probably be more like the homework than the quizzes so make sure you're doing that so any questions you guys have for me okay all right well i'll make your quiz now um, oh one not last question before i let you guys go is there anybody who does not have the book speak up if you do not have the book i still have not received my book oh what was your name kobe kobe oh you haven't okay well i will post one more are you going to get it today hopefully uh i think i'm getting it let's see within two days two days okay so i'll post the next two sections and then yeah i won't po post it anymore we'll still ask you how much homework you got done um i will just keep that up and It'll just be the honor system. Um, it's amazing to me how many people don't fill out that quiz when it's like easy points. Just tell me how much it did. So, um, all right. Any other questions, comments? Okay, I'm gonna stop recording. And if you want to, um, uh, stick around and study, um, you can do that, so. I'll let you guys go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So do you guys want to stick around for a study session? I should be able to for a bit. Okay. For a short bit. I have to go into work earlier than normal. Cool. This section should be fairly easy, so we could fly through this with ease. All right, let me get the book open. Let's see, 2.5. Okay, and then need to know the math problems I need to do. There we go, and then homework for 2.5 has been done. Let's see, syllabus, homework, open, 2.5. So we got number one. Let's do the amplitude and period of the function defined by each equation. Okay. So the amplitude is the number that's before, like sine or cosine, right? Um, I just was copying the problems onto my, or the, yeah, which numbers, problem numbers we were supposed to do. So let me pull up the textbook. Okay. Is it just the two of us? 
I think so. I think everyone else left. Okay. I mean, we can also chat on the text group and then see if anyone else wants to join. Probably later or something like that. So that way, if we can get through the homework, then help others who can't get through the homework. Let's see. Okay, there's one thing I'm trying to figure out. The graph or the chart he showed us, the table at the beginning of the lecture, the ordered pairs of the graph, y equals sine of x. When x is 0, y is 0. An amplitude. Oh, the amplitude is just the absolute value of that. Okay. Gotcha. So the number one. Y equals two sine of X amplitude would be the absolute value of two, which is two. And then the period would be two pi over one or just two pi. Okay. Um, I just really got it pulled up. Y equals two times the sine of X. Um, period is always two pi over B. And B so, is just one. So it's just B two pi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amplitude equals two period equals two pi. And three, we got amplitude. Oh wait, let me write out the problem first. Y equals the sine of two X. Amplitude. Two pi. There's one period is two pi over two. I believe. Yeah. Let me open up a window. Okay. Yeah. Are you still on number one? I'm on three. Okay. I just three. Well, if it's just the two of us, I don't want to hold you back. I kind of know what I'm doing. So. Yeah. And then if you have any issues, just uh, chat in the text group, and then All right. I'll see what I can do to answer the questions. Because it looks like it's relatively easy. So. All righty. So, yeah. Okay. If anything, cool. just uh, text me. You should All have right. my number. Yeah, I do. Cool. Anyways, have a good one. You too. All, All right. right. Bye.